I selected a redneck blind in the middle of a large area where we cut all the cedars. We call it boom glade. From this blind, I can see several acres of native grass and forbs, ideal habitat for during the rut. Through the years, I've hunted this blind with the strategy of covering a lot of acres of bedding area to harvest several good bucks. No, he's going down. Is he down? He's down. He's down. He's down. He's, he's down. down. He's down. The eighth morning of Missouri's firearm season started off extremely foggy. I suspected buck movement was still limited, but given the very high humid conditions, I thought a buck might be cruising downwind of the bedding area checking for does. It's the morning of November 18th and it's a very gray morning. The forecast calls for rain moving in about 11 a.m. and mist before then. It's kind of a little bit of a wind, but just a suppressed day. So I want to be in an area where we can cover a lot of ground, try to catch a deer moving. So we're at a large bed in area. We can cover several acres, hopefully find a deer on their feet. Tyler and I had not seen a single deer all morning until about 8 a.m. when I spotted a large body about 270 yards away in the tall grass. Hey, you can kill him in the morning. Just stay on him, just stay on him. As the deer moved, I spotted antlers and a long tine and threw out some grunt calls with hopes of turning him up here. Tell me if he reacts. The buck was walking at a steady pace through the tall grass, and once again, I had no opportunity for a clean shot. Did he ever react? No. There's a thicket of trees about 150 yards in front of the blind, and through the years, I've noticed a lot of deer cut through that thicket. I was hoping that when we lost sight of the buck, he was coming through the thicket versus going across the bottom of the bedding area. Tyler wisely focused the camera on the uphill portion of the thicket, knowing if we saw the buck again, that's likely where he'd appear. Suddenly, the buck stepped out, and he was still moving, so once again, I had to make some decisions in a hurry. I settled my crosshairs, did a little yell to stop the buck, and took the shot. It's a thrilling moment for a hunter when things happen as planned, but happen really quickly. I'll tell you right now, folks, <laughs> that's a good deer, but I'm more emotional right now than I probably have been with any deer I've taken out as blind, including Handy, which was the record for the Proving Grounds, because deer season started a week ago Saturday, so it's Sunday, we're on the eighth day, and we've hunted every day, morning and afternoon, except one morning we took off. We thought we'd kill 20 or 30 does during gun season. I had a bunch of guests coming in, and that hadn't happened. Deer movement has been tough. And I spotted a big body by itself, 270 yards down in the tall grass. And I thought it was probably a buck, just the way it was moving. I got my scope on it, knew it was, I could see the mass, knew it was a shooter. Don't know which deer, just deer hunting. Knew it was a good deer. Deer I'd be happy, very proud to take. He come up about 60 yards or more through the tall grass, no opening. And to tell you how frustrating it is, I had swoops, had a real easy shot, but his vitals were covered with grass, and I passed. And I didn't sleep. I doubted myself, should I have taken that shot? Should I have not? And this buck got behind a brush pile down here, or a little quarter acre of brush, and we couldn't see him, couldn't see him. And I know a lot of deer go in there. So I was hoping here come through this little pond down here, and during the rut, bucks like to drink because they're running and respirating and getting rid of a lot of water. And Tyler spotted him come out the other side. There's grass in there, and I normally shoot the shoulder. But I fudged back to the crease, to a, a lung heart shot, a vital shot. Took the shot, and his reaction happened so quick, I couldn't tell. But we rewatched on video, and it looks like I smoked him right in the boiler room. So I'm going to say he went 70 yards, 100 yards. So we're going to get down and go look for blood. And I don't celebrate a lot after shooting deer. Uh, I just, you know, my personality. But I'm going to tell you, if we put our hands on this one, i probably celebrate on this one, folks, because it was a very emotional season, but an enjoyable one, because a lot of lessons learned. And that's to me is hunting. It's not just killing. We loved a venison. 
But hunting to me is learning more about the process and the creation and being able to make a shot and when to take a shot and how to prepare the deer and how to cook the deer. And learning is what I love about this process we call hunting, learning lessons of life about me and patience and attitude and how I treat others when I'm stressed out. This has been very long for me, but I wanted to share my heart this morning. After celebrating and sharing my thanks, I couldn't wait to climb out of Redneck and take up the trail. Once again for the Growing Deer team, the Deer Season XP ammo worked perfectly and the trail was only about 60 yards long. Oh, hey, I see white. I see some white. I see antlers. White and antlers is a good thing. Oh yeah. Woohoo! Look at the size of that body. Holy mackerel. Yes, sir. Just a touch high on the entry, but we're like 70 yards. And my Missouri rifle season tag is filled. It's time to Appreciate this old boy. Holy mackerel. Tyler and I had an extremely exciting hunt this morning. Gosh almighty, it worked out great. Got a buck we know was taut. He ran about 70 yards, didn't give me a lot of blood, but I was moving fast, because you can tell how great it is. There's rain on the radar not far away. And what's even more special, it's the eighth day of Missouri's firearm season, out of an 11 day season, kind of like we're in the eighth inning, and we ended up with a great buck. I am thrilled. I can't believe it worked out this cool. Once we got hands on the deer, we recognized him as a buck we called Tot for Teeter Totter. During the summer, we got several Reconnex videos and pictures of him and noticed his left side was much bigger than his right side, lopsided like a Teeter Totter. Most of our pictures of Tot was about one ridge over and in the valley we call Hidden Valley and Rifle Range. Tot was very active during the pre-rut, hitting several of our code blue scrapes. In addition to all the excitement and thrill I experienced from that hunt, I'd also like to share a great lesson. During the lockdown phase of the rut, bucks may not be covering a lot of territory. So the best hunting location is often areas where bucks are going to be seeking does when they are up and moving around. That usually means bedding areas. Effectively hunting these areas often means a stand or blind that offers a view into the cover, not just over the top of it. Firearm season and the peak of the rut is almost over here at the Proving Grounds, which means I'm super excited to start using some post-rut hunting strategies during the late bow season.